Good morning and welcome to Monday Mornings with Maria. How have you all been? Did you guys have a wonderful weekend? I know I did. <clears throat> Saturday we had our women's Bible study that was amazing. And, um, and then we had service on Sunday. I know you men also had Bible study as well on Saturday. So what a better place to be on the weekend, you know, fellowshipping, worshiping, and in God's word, amen. And then on Sunday, with that wonderful message that Pastor Tim brought forth, the lions in Daniel's den. So what a different perspective, because like he shared, you know, we all know it's it's usually titled Daniel in the lion's den, but no, 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 no. It's the lions in Daniel's den, amen, because Daniel was victorious, hallelujah. So this morning, I just want to share a few quick verses with you in the book of Habakkuk. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but we're in Habakkuk. And Habakkuk, if you have been following the survey of the Bible, Habakkuk is one of the books in the prophetical books. Remember how Pastor Tim had also shared yesterday about the three sections um, of the Bible and so a historical uh, poetical and prophetical. So here we are in the books where all the prophets are, and Habakkuk is a minor prophet in those 17 books. And so here Habakkuk, just to give you just a really quick, quick break, uh, breakdown, the setting, Babylon was becoming the dominant world power, and Judah so would soon feel Babylon's destructive force. So this is right before the exile, where they're captured and taken to Babylon, and then they're in the 70 years of exile. So a lot of things are going on in this time, but in chapter 3 that I'm going to read, it's Habakkuk's prayer. And I'm actually going to read verses 13 through 19, which is the end, the end of his prayer. And it reads like this. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine. Though the olive crops fail and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of the deer. He enables me to go on the heights. Amen. Amen. So here, you know, they're going through, uh, Habakkuk is saying that no matter what, you know, though the crops, the, the crop failure and the death of animals would devastate Judah at that time. That means their whole food source would be gone. But Habakkuk affirmed that even in the times of starvation and loss, that he would still rejoice in the Lord, no matter his situation, no matter the circumstance, that he was still going to rejoice in the Lord. Because Habakkuk's feelings were not controlled by the events around him. No, no. But they were controlled by his faith in God. Amen. His faith in God's ability to give him strength. So when nothing makes sense, of what's going on in your life, then that's when we need to make, that's when we need to purpose in our hearts that no matter what, no matter the situation, we're gonna rejoice in God. Like the way it says in Thessalonians, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice that no matter our situation, no matter our circumstance, good or bad, and everything in between, we will always rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because our faith is in him, because our trust is in him, because he said that he would always be with us. He said that he would always provide for us, that he would take care of us, that he would, he, you know, that by his stripes we're healed, that, you know, that he would always meet our needs, you know, and so we can trust in him regardless of what's going on. Because here Habakkuk, he was saying that no matter what, I'm going to rejoice in you. I'm going to rejoice in you. Even if everything is falling apart, even if I don't have any food to eat, I am still going to rejoice in you. And this is one, uh, uh, verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will be joyful in my God Savior, is quoted a few times in the New Testament by Paul. And there's a few different places. 
But that's because Paul, he rejoiced in the Lord, no matter his situation, in prison, in chains, or, or ministering. He was going to rejoice. He was going to rejoice. And therefore, their encouragement to us is that we will rejoice. Because there was a lot of evil going on at this time. A lot of wickedness, a lot of evil. And those people seemed to be prospering, to be doing well. While while they're saying, well, look at me. I'm, I'm not. I'm struggling. I'm suffering. Look at, at the hands of these evil people. And, and Habakkuk actually asked God, you know, why are these evil people prospering at this time? Why And why are the righteous suffering? But you know what God's, God, God's answer is, you know what? They, they will, in the, in the long run, they will be punished. Because when God, God called, we will spend eternity with our Heavenly Father. And that's what we have to be. We have to be kingdom-minded. Knowing that our prize, that our reward, that our blessing is when our blessed hope, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, comes in those clouds to collect his bride. There is where we will, we will reap the reward of us being faithful to our Lord. That no matter what, no matter what, this is temporary. And that's the mindset that we have to have. That this is temporary and we need to be kingdom minded and purpose in our heart already. That I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Amen. No matter what is going on. No matter if you've just received that eviction notice. The bills are piling up. The diagnosis you just received. Your family isn't serving God. Know that God is still at work, even if you can't see it. So my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we can rejoice in you. That your word says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And therefore, we will walk in your will and in your ways and in your word, Father God. We will stand on your word that is our firm foundation, Father God. That we can, regardless of what's going on, we will rejoice. We will praise you. We will worship you. We will glorify you and magnify you no matter what. Because we know that we have the victory because our faith and trust is in you and in you alone that you will see us through that you know our needs father god for you are our provider jehovah jireh the lord who provides jehovah rapha the lord our healer hallelujah Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner who covers us who covers us that we are under you father god we love you and praise you and glorify you father god and we will, we will proclaim your goodness. We will proclaim your faithfulness. We will shout it from the rooftops how we praise you and we love you and we live for you because of, because of how you saved us. You set us free. You delivered us. You bless us. You provide for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We love you, Lord. We love you. And I lift up my dear brothers and sisters to you, Father God, that you would be with them, lead them, guide them, direct them, speak to their hearts as they seek you, Lord God. Strengthen us, enable us to continue going forward and to share you, to share your word with everyone we encounter. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory for you and only you are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining me this morning. And let's see, let's see who's on this morning. So good morning, Alfredo and Karen and Ivy. Good morning, Epi. Good morning, Al and Mary and Joe. Good morning, Hermana Silvia. Amen. <laughs> and good morning, Kim. Oh, she's in California, my old stomping grounds. <laughs> Have fun. 
And uh, safe travel and mercies wherever you go, Kim. And good morning, Christine, RJ, and Georgia. Good morning, D. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Swanee. Good morning, Cami. Amen. Amen, Hermana Sylvia. Good morning, Pastor Ron. Good morning, Rose. And that's everybody that I can see right now. So if I missed you, please forgive me. But have an amazing day in Jesus and a wonderful week. So God bless you and love you.